Well, that wraps up our journey into Web3, but that doesn't mean the fun is to end for you here in your journey on exploring the wonderful world of Web3. In this section, I'm gonna talk about giving you a roadmap for anyone that's not necessarily interested in becoming a developer. Web3 needs many different operations and knowledge and skill sets. Uh, so I will show you as a non-developer, what probably I would recommend as the next steps from this course. So the first thing I would say is to understand blockchain concepts. And this is actually the same thing I would recommend for a developer, but it's really important to understand some of the other, in more depth, some of the things that we've already talked about, like the consensus models, a public and private key, what are those and how they're used, um, digital signing, how are you signing off transactions and why you use a, a private key to do so. And even just some general ideas and concepts around nodes and network operations. I think it's a great place to start to become a more informed and efficient user of Web3 applications. So I wouldn't say you need to spend a million, <clears throat> a million times over to understand some of these things, but just to give a better understanding uh, will probably make a lot of the other concepts and things you will uh, see in Web3 make a lot more sense. Then I would also say understand the landscape. So there's things we talked about here, like DAOs, protocols, um, <clears throat> that you know you will get exposed to very early on in your Web3 journey. So really kind of going down the rabbit hole, as they say, is worth it for some of the things that interest you the most. There's also a whole set of Web3 tools that are out there um, <clears throat> that help for working with protocols or working with DAOs. So exploring those areas and how, as a user, you would use them or the value that they bring is another great place to, for people to, as non-developers, explore. And then getting into the lingo and the terms. Web3 is full of them. We covered a lot of them here and tried to define them in the best ways, uh, but you will probably inevitably see uh, other terms that you've never heard before. So really invest the time in understanding what they mean and how they connect. Uh, there's many different gloss glossaries out there uh, that provide that, or just a quick Google search and reading an article uh, would be extremely helpful. Then I would recommend actually becoming a user. So I'm not trying to push anyone to buy crypto uh, and what to token or coin to purchase, but I do think it's really beneficial to really get, to get your hands into some of the concepts that we've explored in this course. So even if it's um, you know the, uh, the amount that you can afford, it doesn't have to be a significant amount, but just buying some crypto, knowing what that process looks like, setting up a wallet, maybe using something like MetaMask, uh, will will really put some reality into some of the concepts that we talked about here. And even exploring some things like NFT marketplaces and token swaps, we'll understand at least how currently um, users are using these services and ways that maybe you as a non-developer can improve on them, uh, becoming a user and understanding some of the flows in ways that uh, developers or people who are running on these protocols now aren't seeing. And lastly, and I think it's the most important for me as a completely opinionated uh, person is to join a DAO. Really go out, list some of your skills that you have. You might want, you might be a product manager, you might be a writer, you might be into marketing, you might be into legal. All of these sorts of skills are actually applied and needed by most DAOs. Because again, DAOs are replacing the ways that we have worked as organizations in the past. So the functions are very similar, whether but not without the hierarchies uh, that you may have experienced in the past. So really list out and understand ways that you might be either interested in doing from prior experience or skills that you might be interested in growing is a great way to understand how you might want to, how might you want to contribute to a DAO. And you can find DAOs, there's different listings and directories. You can find them through Twitter. And I would also recommend that you actually join the discords of those DAOs if they aren't um, blocked by to certain token requirements or even following them on Twitter to get a general sense of when they, you know, recruit for, if they do any sort of recruiting or onboarding, uh, also what their mission is, different events, and largely that's the way that you get into DAO is to contribute or looking like you're um, an active part of the community. So that's ultimately going to be a great way to do that. And once you're in the DAO itself, join the town halls, join DAO, they normally are at DAOs have sub DAOs or guilds or different teams within the DAO. Um, so again, it, aligning your skill sets to those sub DAOs um, and also understanding the comings and goings uh, within the DAO by visiting a, uh, experiencing a town hall 
uh, will give you really up close and personal uh, of how these concepts around governance uh, are applied and give you a better sense of how you can contribute uh, to the world of Web3 and continue to learn. And for that, I really like to thank you for viewing this course and hope that you continue to grow within Web3 as a non-developer as we rebuild the ways that we transact and interact with each other uh, through the blockchain. Thank you.